much of a $60,000 HELOC should I use to chunk? What's the recommended percentage or how is it determined? So, glad you asked that question, G-Man, G-Man. And then after this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up and take some callers. All right, this will be fun. So G-Man says, you know, he's got a $60,000 HELOC. All right. Now, personally, this is how I operate. Take it if you want. Use it however you want. I take your cash flow per month, conservative number, times it by 12. You'll get your yearly cash flow, right? You'll get your yearly cash flow. Take 60,000 times it by 66%, you get 39,600. Let's say your cash flow is 30 grand a month, uh, 30 grand a year, right? 66% is 39,600, you cash flow 30,000 a year. Let's just say that's the case. You're probably making good income if you're cash flowing 30 grand a year. Right? So if that's the case, these numbers are pretty close. I might go with the higher number. Okay? Now, depending on your comfort level, the other thing that I do, G Man, is I look at the debt snowball concept. And I say, okay, if I'm going to use this $60,000 HELOC to pay off debt, Right? If paying off debt is the goal, you're trying to be debt free, let's say that's the goal. Pretty simple, straightforward, no leveraging, just you, you just want to pay off debt. Run your numbers on debt snowball first. You know that your extra cash flow every year is 30 grand a year. So the most that you can pay towards debt is 30,000 a year. So in order for velocity banking, to make sense, it has to beat that snowball by, you know, at least 30 to 40 percent or higher, ideally, ideally, right? As long as you chunk more than what the cash flow is per year, you go faster than debt snowball. That's the whole point. So use debt snowball as your measuring stick, 66 percent, take your cash flow, times it by 12, see where the two numbers lie. And then you pick a number either in between, nothing above 66, nothing below your cash flow times 12. You're going to get a pretty decent um, you know, number to start with. Anyone know of any lenders that are currently offering HELOCs? You know, if you watch VIP Financial, they put out content here and there that talks about different you know, credit lines. One of them that they mentioned was PenFed, and this is a, a, a nationwide credit union, military friendly, so that's pretty good. Um, U.S. Bank is cool. I have videos in my course where I go state by state, and I've covered, I covered some states, but more so I try to say, look, um, you got to look at a radius where you live you do like a 25 mile radius and you start calling the banks and asking because maybe today the bank is offering a HELOC but tomorrow COVID hits they're no longer offering HELOC applications so you don't want to waste an application get the hard inquiry if they weren't even accepting applications in the first place right so you don't want to fall into that trap so that's why I have a whole list of videos where I go step by step on how to find credit unions, banks that offer the, the tools that we want and need for velocity banking. And I give the criteria what to look for. Why do you recommend a first lien HELOC? Uh, why do you not recommend a first lien HELOC or do you question mark or an all in one mortgage? So me personally, I don't recommend anything per se, right? I simply show the options. So I have clients that have first position HELOCs. I have clients that have second position HELOCs. I have clients that have personal lines of credit. I have clients that have credit cards. 
I have clients that have all in one mortgage and I have clients that have all of the above. So I'm not against any specific product. What I'm against is lack of education, lack of knowledge, okay? Lack of discipline, not being aware of what you're doing, not having a strategy. That is what I'm against. I'm against somebody saying, uh, I'm gonna go get a first position HELOC, but I still owe money on two cars, the student loan, the personal loan, 17 credit cards. Don't you think you're kind of skipping over? Shouldn't we maybe start knocking down the credit cards, positioning myself better for the first position HELOC? See, some, some velocity banking specialists or experts will convince you like say for example let's just let's run some numbers let's do an example so we don't cause confusion let's say you you got you got two cars right one student loan one personal loan 10 credit cards one mortgage okay there are many ways to teach velocity banking, ladies and gentlemen. You have to find somebody you know, you know, like, and trust, and then you go all in. I'm simply showing you the options yet again. One way that some velocity banking experts will teach velocity banking is they'll look at all of these debts. They'll look at your mortgage. They'll take a look at the equity that's in there. And they'll try to immediately replace your mortgage with a first position HELOC. I am not in favor of this if I have this, if I have all of this holding me back, right? If I have all this other debt holding me back. I believe mathematically that I can go faster in debt payoff if I start with the lower debts and work my way up personal opinion so the flip side is some velocity banking experts will say okay we're gonna get you a first position HELOC you're gonna do velocity banking on the HELOC right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your car and consolidate in the HELOC and then we're gonna take the other car consolidate in the HELOC then we're gonna take the personal loan put in the HELOC and then the credit cards. So what they're doing is they're shifting, they're consol consolidating all the other debts into the HELOC. Then what they do is they'll encourage you to go get a bunch of 0% credit cards, run a bunch of balance transfers to get rid of all this debt. And then you pay the monthly minimum payment over here and 0%. Meanwhile, you're doing velocity banking over here, knocking down, creating equity. By the time this expires, you then shift the credit card debt that you shifted from the cars and the student loan, the personal loan, the credit card back into the HELOC, okay? That's how some people teach it. I choose not to teach it that way. I do not see the long-term value because what we have to also factor in is the human error. What is the likelihood of a person with all this debt making five to seven K, never ran a business before in their life. They've lived paycheck to paycheck most of their life. They're 45 years old, they're 55 years old. What is the likelihood of them sticking to this? Like psychologically speaking, what is the likelihood of them attacking the biggest debt first? And this is where I actually agree with Dave Ramsey on attacking the smaller debt, psychologically working your way up from small to greatest. In some cases, yes, this will work for the disciplined, for the higher income earner. For sure it'll work, wouldn't doubt it. But for my average viewer that, you know, like I said earlier, that's making 4K to 10K, you know, my 10K people definitely have more discipline 
most of the time, but really the people here, you know, your 4K earner a month, 3K, 5, 6, 7. You live paycheck to paycheck 20, 30 years of your life. You've only cash flow 500 to 1,000 bucks a month. What is the likelihood of you going after your biggest debt, trying to knock that down, consolidate other debts, get 0% credit? I mean, all, this is too much. That's too much. So what I do is I meet the person where they're at. It is very likely that the person that makes 4,000 a month, 5,000, 3,000, 2,000, they know who Dave Ramsey is, seven baby steps. They get that. They understand it. They're familiar with it. So I ease them from that into, okay, well, let's do a hybrid of debt snowball velocity banking. We'll call it debt snowball 2.0. You can call it that. And let's start with your credit cards. So we'll do velocity banking with the credit card. Bam, 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 bam. Knock it down, build your credit. Okay, now we go apply for a PLOC. And we say, okay, that personal loan with Lending Club is 16%. Bam, let's go smack that out of the park. Consolidating my personal loan to PLOC that's charging me 6%, 7%, 8%, right? So now they're building momentum. They're, ma they're getting results. Okay, this is gone. That's gone. This is gone. That's gone. When they, if someone goes from a, a first position mortgage to a first position HELOC, nothing happened. They didn't remove anything. It's going to take time to see the actual results. People lose momentum and faith pretty quickly when, uh, when they don't see instant gratification or instant results. So those are my thoughts behind that. So I'm not that I'm against it. I'm a, like I said, I'm against lack of knowledge, lack of education, lack of discipline, lack of a strategy. That's what I'm against. I have a policy loan and a HELOC. Which one should I prioritize in paying off first? The HELOC, in my opinion. In most cases, the HELOC. See, I know some of you, what you guys like to do is you'll take your HELOCs and your PLOCs and your all-in-one loans and then you guys chunk right into a policy then you guys borrow so you take out a loan you either invest it spend it right or you pay off debt that's what most of you guys are doing investing it spending it running expenses right or paying off debt that's from, for the most part, kind of narrowing it to three areas, right? When you chunked, you're now in debt on your debt tool. So the goal should be do velocity banking on the debt tool. Bring your line of credit to zero as fast as possible so that you can focus on max funding. So you're going to leave the loan outstanding, right? Do not pay back. This is kind of like how I like to operate. Me personally, I've got over 60K in loans on my Guardian. And then I got 11K in loans on Mass Mutual. I have no intention of paying back these loans anytime soon. No intention whatsoever. I send the money, right? In my case, I don't need to use debt because I have plenty of cash flow capital already. So I chunk money into IBC, I borrow it back out, I invest it, and I spend it. I don't have any debt, so I don't have to worry about that. So I just invest it and I spend it. I run expenses, I invest, right? Crypto, gold, silver, stocks, da-da-da, right? Things like that. And I put it back into my own business, things like that. I leave the loans outstanding. 
in your case, for you guys that are, say, leveraging debt to help you max fund a policy, maybe you're using cash flow, cash on hand, capital savings, plus a portion of debt to help max fund the policy, right? And if we do velocity banking on the debt tool, bring it to zero within 12 months or less, by the anniversary date, you rinse and repeat. Make the next chunk, max fund, borrow out, invest, spend, pay off debt, keep it going. You'll get to a point where you become debt free, cash flow positive. You'll have a ton of loans outstanding you'll have less of a need to borrow because you'll be cash flowing more, making more income. And then you can start to just simply max fund the policy and then start to pay back your loans, restoring your loans to zero. And then when you've accumulated, I don't know, 300 K in cash value after spending three to four years to pay off all your debt, while simultaneously establishing a life insurance policy, guess what? You've restored the policy to zero. You've max funded the policy over four, five, six, seven years or, or whatever. Let's say you built up 300K, you borrow 66%, and you go buy a multifamily unit. You go buy a 16 unit building, an eight unit building, a four unit building, and now we're really talking 10X, and it gets really, really fun. Thank you.